All right. We want to welcome you all back out today. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for supporting the children. It means a lot. We have had a wonderful week with Vacation Bible School this week. We had a special spring break edition, Vacation Bible School. And we do something a little different in the community because we try to get the children during spring break when we know that everybody's at home, unless you've planned a family vacation, there's really nothing else going on. And so we extend an invitation every year during spring break to the children in our community to come over to Wren Seventh-day Adventist Church and have a wonderful time with us in the Lord. And we did exactly that this year. We're going to get our program started, and I'm going to ask Chayden to come up and give us a prayer, an opening prayer. Thank you, God, for this day. Be blessed, teachers. Bless the school. Bless Baby Bobby School. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right, God. Teach us to pray. That was our theme. And we have, as you can see, some things up here that encouraged and motivated the children to pray. We wanted to teach them. Now, we had a lot of children that knew how to pray. But, of course, we had some that didn't quite know how that this week or after this week they have a better idea of how to pray. Thank you so much, Caden. That was one of our Vacation Bible School students actually from last year. And he and his family have kept in touch with us and have visited us, and we have fallen in love with them. So we claim them as our own. My name is Betty James, and I am the Vacation Bible School Director here at Rand Seventh-day Adventist Church. And it is always such an honor and a privilege for me to do this labor of love for the Lord. We uh, started out last Monday. Monday, we began last Monday, and we had 41. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, that's not a lot of children. But you got to consider we're in a small county. In the small county of Jefferson County, we have 41 children. And so we were like, woo, that was, that's good, that's good. Thank God he answered our prayers, right? So we were counting up the little things that we had because I planned for And that goes to show you um, why we shouldn't make plans. We should allow God to make the plans. And I thought that's what I was doing. Because uh, last year, we actually got up to 57. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to plan for 50. And then if we have seven, and by Friday, we'll have 60, we'll be good to go. Okay, Wednesday, we had 68. Did y'all hear what I said? Wednesday, we had 68 children. We were like, wow. We had uh, one of our church members, he's not in here now. And someone told me, they said, you know, Brother Birch. Someone told me, they said, you know, Brother Birch was praying for 75. I said, where he at? <laughs> I said, Brother Birch, you good. Birch, you good. You good. Don't pray. You, you, you good. You good. Don't. 68. And again, you know, for some of you, you might be thinking, that's not a lot of kids. But it was a lot of kids. I, I don't know if we have 68 church members. Because we're a small church. And we're in a small rural community. And so we were scrambling. And they almost overtook us that day. I'm going to tell you all the truth. It was, all, it was almost a mute adults. And we began to pray. And that night, uh, one, of, uh, one of the church members said, we got, to make, we got to send out the loud cry tonight for prayer meeting. We got to tell the church we need everybody to show up. We need all hands on deck. Because we began to see the Lord. By Friday, now, we don't quite have the number because what happened is we ran out of certificates. I bought 75 certificates. We ran out of certificates. And yesterday at the closing, when we were asking some of the children, if you didn't get your certificate, raise your hand. It maybe it was about 10, 10 of them that raised their hand. So I want to set the record straight. We had over 75 children. 
over 75 and i thank god for that amen it was such a blessing to us today we just want to show you some of the things that we did we're not going to be here long but we did want going to give the parents a parents and meet some of the people that were loving on your children this week because that's exactly what we did um before we get started again the children's theme was teach us to pray and so you see the stoplights, and you guys might be wondering, like the children were, why do you got stoplights? Because I thought the stoplights were a perfect example of God's answers to our prayers. Sometimes he says yes, and that's the green light. Sometimes God says wait. That was the yellow light. No. Why, children? Because he loves us so. And if you think about that in your own life and with your own children, it's not that you're saying no because you had the authority to say no, but we can see maybe what they can't. And so we say no because we love and we want to protect. So at this time, we're going to do our theme song. And I don't think anybody needs the paper, but give them their paddles. And so what we did every day during opening and closing was we had paddles to represent yes, wait, and no. And what we did was our four to six year old class had the green paddles, but today we're gonna let those on the front use them. Our seven to nine year old class had the yellow paddles, and then our 10 to 12 year old class had the red paddles. All right, you guys ready? You got the lights for us? Play the music. Yeah, that's Mr. Um, Trey. All right, you guys. So make sure you don't have anything in your hand. Let me get your book for you. So this is our theme song. Y'all ready? Y'all gotta sing loud. Here we go. Watch our stoplights. Sometimes God oh, answers yes. yes. Good job. Amen, church? Amen. Yes, we, t we wanted to teach the children to pray, but we wanted to be honest with them about prayer. Because a lot of times, you know, you might hear about if you just pray, just pray, just ask and believe, and God's going to give it to you. And that is not entirely true. So we wanted to give them a realistic idea of what prayer is. It's talking to God, and sometimes he might say yes, and sometimes no, and sometimes he says no wait we had a prayer box that you'll see in our picture show all right guys we had a prayer box a big gold box and it said prayer box and what we did we told them every day if you have a prayer on your heart or once you learn about prayer or if there's something going on with you in your life and you want to write it out they could go to the prayer station they could write their prayer on a card or a piece of paper and put it in the box. The box was glued shut, and we let them know, we cannot open this box. We don't know what you're saying, and that's between you and God. And if you cannot write, you can still take a piece of paper and scribble. And God knows what's on your heart. And you put it in the prayer box, and then we are going to pray and when God answers this prayer, you can write it in your prayer journal. And so that was another um, thing that we had for them this week. At this time, I do want to introduce our wonderful, wonderful VBS staff, those who are here with us. As I said earlier, uh, my name is Betty James, and I'm the Vacation Bible School leader. 
and the um, children's ministries leader here at RENS. And I absolutely love um, the responsibility that the church has given me. And it's one of those things like the elder was saying today, uh, starting really at the beginning of the year, Vacation Bible School keeps me up. I wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning praying for the children who are coming, the children who were here, their families, our church, the community. And all throughout the day, I teach kindergarten, but all throughout the day, I'm making side notes about Vacation Bible School. I'm making side notes, and my family can tell you. And it really starts at the beginning of the year, and it doesn't end until Vacation Bible School is over. So I was just so honored, and when I tell you, I left it, up. my son said this, I left it all on the field, I think we all did. We left it all on the field this week for God. Uh, Jay James, my husband, Elder Jay James, if you'll just stand when I call your name. He's our Bible instructor every year, Elder James. And he teaches the children what the concept is. Last year, our concept, oh, I'm not going through the slideshow right now. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, not right, not right yet. Yes, okay. I'm just introducing the staff. Uh, last year, our, our theme was charging our faith, and this year it was teach us to pray. And he did an absolutely excellent job, and I'll let him come and tell you about that. And then I'll, we had Elder Lewis, who's our acting pastor right now, but for me, my pastor, he was here as a spiritual leader and guide for us, an encourager. And it just did my heart good. Every day when I would walk in, he would look at me and smile. And he would come to me and tell me what the number is. All right, you got 68 today. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. But uh, thank you so much, Elder Lewis, for being here. And then, of course, his wife, Sister Lewis, Sister Christine Lewis, um, another one of my surrogate mothers here, just so encouraging and always just so sweet and kind. She was in charge of our prayer station. And I told the children that I prayed about it and the Lord put her on my heart because she's just one of the sweetest, kindest people I know. And so when they would go to the prayer station, they were greeted by an angel. Thank you, Sister Lewis. And with her was Charlene Farmer, but I don't think Charlene is a sister farmer's here. Then I had, of course, Superior Burley. I didn't even know, but I, but I was praying. I'm telling you, God is so good. I didn't know the talents and the gifts she had. She was perfect for registration because she's a member of the community and she knew all the children. Sister Burley and her family came in the church last year through Vacation Bible School. Amen. Her children came to Vacation Bible School last year, and they began to come and join us, and now they are family, and even if they try to leave, we're not going to let them go. It's going to be an abusive situation because you can't leave. But Sister Burley was perfect. I was like, oh, my God, thank you. You know, sometimes when you see God manifesting you, I knew. That's when I knew that God was in it. When we came over that Sunday, and she had so many gifts and talents that I didn't even know about. She was perfect for registration, and thank you. She was calm when she needed to be, and she was stern when she needed to be. She was firm when she needed to be, and I didn't have to worry about anything having to deal with registration. Thank you so much. Then we had uh, Brother Birch. Uh, I think he left. Brother Birch was our grounds and monitors. He was here every morning. He helped also with getting lunch together. He was the one praying for 75 children and his prayers were answered. And we were also able to have a prize table and Brother Birch gave me money to put under the prizes. So the children would come to the prize table and pick a prize and sometimes they would have some money under there. So that was Brother Birch. Then we had Bryce James. Um, he's in the booth back there, that's my son. Bryce was the four to six year old teacher and I was telling them that Bryce um, actually um, is in college to become an educator. But after this week, he assured me that he will not be educating four to six-year-olds. He said, I definitely know that's not the group. <laughs> but he did an excellent job with them. And then we had uh, Sister Jackie Jordan. Jackie was our seven to nine-year-old sergeant at arms, general, the colonel. And when I called Jackie when we, before we had v VBS, I said, hey, what group you want to work with this year? And she said, oh, I'll take the group I had last year, seven to nine-year-olds. I was like, oh, okay. Well, let me tell you, she had about 30 
it was about 37 to 9 year olds. And so I, what group are you going to take next year? <laughs> okay. Thank you. And working with her was Sister Hernandez as well, and she's not here. And then we had uh, Jaden James, uh, my other son. He was our sports coach. And again, he did an excellent job with the children, and I appreciate you so much. The dedication, um, his commitment. He was all on YouTube looking up sports and I guess how to act like a coach, and he did an excellent job with them. Thank you, Jaden. And then we have, uh, let me make sure, Sister Quana Peters right here on the front, and Sister BB Nurse. Now, to bring their children to Vacation Bible School. And I thought they were going to bring the children, drop the children off, and leave. But again, God knew what I did not know. These two ladies, who are my sisters in the Lord from our sister church in Augusta, they came every day. They parked their cars. They got out. They locked the car doors. They came in and rolled up their sleeves and said, what do I need to do? And so they were in charge of arts and crafts. And I thank God for them because we just children... We definitely needed them, and they did an awesome job for us. Thank you. And we had Brother Dave Williams. We had uh, Daphne. She came Friday. Sister Rosa Anderson. Thank you, Sister Rosa. Sister Gwen Jackson. And, and Miss Bam. I'm calling you Miss Bam. Yes, yes, she was here with us. I'm telling you, we, had, we needed all hands on deck, and God sent the right people. And then we had... My sister, Terry Lewis. Terry, please stand. Uh, Terry is, she was just so vital to me. I would call her. I could bounce things off of her. I would say, what do you think about this? No, we ain't going to do that. I said, well, I, I'm not going to do that. She was like, no, 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 we need to pray. I mean, she was really my counselor, all of that. With everything she has gone on in her life, I was calling her this whole quarter, talking about VBS. And so then I told her, I said, well, this is what I think I want to do. She is a nurse practitioner, but she's my health station person. She knows all things health. That's what she does. Well, I told her, I said, well, this year I think I want to combine health and science. So what I want you to do, I want you to do health one day, and then the next day I want you to be a scientist. And she was like, what? <laughs> oh, what? No, no, no. I, now, see, I know how to stay in my lane. I do what I'm, I know. I was like, listen, I know you can do it. And she did it. And she did an awesome job. Thank you, Terry. She came every morning and had the lunch ready. She was in charge of lunch. She was in charge of health and science. She was in charge of first aid. She was in charge when I wasn't here. So I just thank you so much that God sent her our way. She is a jewel. And let's see, that I get everybody? I don't want to miss anybody. Brother Robert Jackson was here as sergeant at arms outside, but also just another uh, child for the children to play with. <laughs> A big child for the children to play with. All right, now we're going to do our pictures, our picture presentation, so you guys can see what we were doing this week. There's no music, so we're just going to look at them. Look at the screen, guys, so you can see yourself. So there's our thing, teach us to pray. And there are some of the children praying. Uh, Miss Ellen was the van ministry leader, and we thank God for her. But by Thursday, I was saying, Ellen, you, 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 you don't have to get the van no more. <laughs> but we appreciate her and her ministry, okay? And then there's Miss Burley. Every morning when the children walked in, they saw her smiling face at the registration table. All right. And they would have a wonderful lunch. As you something different for them every day. There's Sister Lewis at the prayer station. And Sister Farmer. And there's yours truly opening up our program. I told the children, look how cute my hair was on Monday. <laughs> well, by yesterday, it was in a ponytail. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And then there is the prize table. Woo! Every day at the end of the day, we would come back and gather, and the teachers would ask questions. And if you knew the answer to the question, you got to go up to the prize table. And they could choose a gift. And uh, some of the gifts, like I said, had money, had money under it. And there's yours truly again. I don't know why it's on there so many times. All right, so I had some very... Uh, sweet helpers this year, Angelica and Genesis. So we told them if you're over 12, you're going to help. You're going to be a helper. 
You're going to be a runner. When we call you, you need to be there. You need to be ready to go. You need to be energetic. And they were all those things and more. And then the ABS, okay. There are the children during their opening and closing song or our theme song. And there's Mr. Bryce with his class, four to six-year-olds. And then I was the four to six-year-old Bible instructor because that's a special little group. And so we different things learning how to pray, okay? And at the end of our sessions, we would kneel and pray. And the first day, they weren't quite sure, but by the end, they were kneeling with me, and all of them were taking turns praying. Amen? And there they are again, as you can see. <laughs> but we love them. We wouldn't have traded them for anything in the world. There's Miss Jackie. And that was her seven to nine year old. And Miss Herndet, Miss Hernandez. We were hoping to have a Spanish group, but I think next year we'll be ready for them. There's Miss Jackie again and Miss Bam outside with the children. <laughs> yes. There they are under the health and science tent, as you can see. Seven to nine-year-olds, they gave them a run for their money. There's Elder James, our Bible instructor, and he also was the 10 to 12-year-old guide. And there they are again, the 10 to 12s. Mr. James is giving them their instruction, and he taught each class, the seven to nine and the 10 to 12. And then we would allow the children to pray if they wanted to. And a lot of them did want to pray. So we had a prayer bench up here. That's what this is. Telling them about kneeling in prayer and how to, what the posture is for prayer. And so we brought the bench example. Okay. And you can just go through these. There are our prayer hands. Oh, look at you. You see yourself? Okay. <laughs> We talked about um, folding our hands during prayer so that our hands are not distracted or doing anything else except praying. We are not touching anyone. Our hands are not fiddling with anything. And we pray. And then, of course, you know, everything we did, we came from the Bible. And so we have the Bible here, the live si sample of learning about prayer, learning how to pray, learning when to pray, learning why we pray, but most importantly, learning who we pray to. Oh, there you go, Janie. And we tried to make sure we got a picture of every child this week in one way or another. And we showed them the presentation yesterday. And there are our arts and crafts teachers, and now we're gonna go uh, coordinated with the theme that day. And so some of the things that they made in arts and crafts. All right, guys, okay, all right, pay attention. Those are the four to six year olds. God answers prayer. They made crowns, because when we get to heaven, we told them we'll all get a crown. They did some painting. We painted prayer boxes. They each made their own prayer box. They made prayer journals one day. And there's our four to six-year-olds again with Mr. Bryce and some of our vacation Bible school attendees. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's one of our uh, repeat students from last year. And then here's the health and science station with Nurse Lewis. She was our health specialist, science specialist, okay. And she did a demonstration one day talking to the children about how prayer changes things. And she used some science cups as an example of that. When you put ice in the cup, it changed the uh, cup to a different color. 
And then one day she did a experiment about when we pray collectively to God, that's what happens with our prayers. He can turn something beautiful into our prayers. Joanna, there we are. And then they had sports each day with Mr. James. And I could tell you, Mr. James is 21 years old. And when he got home every day, Mr. James went straight to bed. I was like, what? <laughs> they wore <will> him out. <laughs> and that's a little video. Will it play? If it, if it won't play, that's OK. They were playing kickball every day. I think he had something different for them going on. OK, we could just yeah go to the next one. They had kickball, they had hula hoop, they did, um, what were they doing someday? They did tug of war, that was a big hit. Okay, volleyball, yeah, we're going to get to our volleyball. So Monday through Thursday, we basically followed our routine, and there they are raising their hands to get to go to that prize table. All right, Friday was the finale. We did something different Friday. Friday we had a community day where we invited the community over for spaghetti, a spaghetti lunch. We had food boxes outside for them. And we had field day for the children. There's the prayer box, our beautiful prayer box. And then we burned the prayer box in the field. We took the children to the field, we made a circle, we prayed. And we wanted to see, we wanted them to see us burn the prayer box to let them know that only you and God knows what you put in that box. And they look forward to burning that box all week long. And there it is. Because it was so windy, we wasn't sure. We had a prayer booth out there for people who wanted prayer from the community. They could stop by the prayer booth and the children would pray for them. It was a beautiful day. And here's some of the community. There's our community service leader. Oh, did I mention that? Ms. Terry is our community service leader. And one of her assistants, Ms. Ida. And then there are our faithful brothers and sisters working, helping us out. We could not have had this week without you. And the children also worked at the table to help give out food. We had, of course, refreshments for them every day. That's, that's Brother Birch right there, you guys. That's the prayer war. If y'all need a prayer to get through, call Brother Birch. There's the volleyball game they had Friday on the field for field day. And it was really just a beautiful ending to the week. Did you guys enjoy field day? And then every child received a bag yesterday little gifts in the bag as a reminder of different things that we had done during the week for them. And uh, the bags are over here. And that was while we were around the prayer box, we were singing. And then there's a group photo. We did the best we could. <laughs> it was an awesome week. And we will see y'all next year, the same time, same place. Right, guys? Y'all All right. So at this time, I wanted to give them a few more gifts, just one more gift. And then I'm going to let the staff say something if they want to say something in closing. And then we're going to sing our prayer song that we learned this week. So let's see here. Let me see. Oh, before I... Well, I'll give the kids their gifts as they're leaving. I'll do that. Is you going to get a little bag, friends? And it has a pen and a little uh, keychain that says Jesus loves you and a little book. So we're going to give each one of you one of those before you leave and a ribbon of excellence. Now, my helpers, my helpers, I know they thought that all they were getting was recognized, but that's not true because we could not have done without the helpers. They were very obedient. You know, sometimes teenagers can be stubborn. And sometimes when you ask them to move, they don't move. But these helpers that we had were runners. It was like they were asking us, what do you, what do you need next? OK, go do it. OK, boom. 
to come back. Okay, what do you need next? And I'm telling you, I just, I need that in my life. I was like, I need some teenagers who are going to do some running for me at home. So I want to thank you guys and let you know that this week I decided that all of you were our most valuable last Sunday about who were we thinking about giving, you know, awards to. And I couldn't tell her that I was going to be looking at my runners because I know that's a special job that she had. And she was one of the ones who was everywhere, all over the place. Thank you so much, Haley. So what we have for our runners is a little gift. Let me see. Can I show you guys? We have a little special gift for them that only teen that teenagers probably appreciate. <clears throat> and then you guys have an award. It says MVP because you were the most valuable people to us, Nation Bible School, and we want you to know that we see you, we appreciate you, and I could not have done it without you. Thank you so much. Angelica, Angelica helped me out. She was my personal assistant. And when I tell you, come up, Angelica. She was so sweet because I was all over the place. I was bossy some, some, at some moments. I, I didn't remember what I, could, what I was supposed to be doing. She was thinking up things for me. She was in my brain, and she was right there by my side. Thank you so much, Angelica. And then we had Genesis. Come up, Genesis. Such a sweet girl. Genesis so willing to help us. Thank you, Genesis, for being all over the place again. Then we had Daniel. He was our only boy, but he was holding it down. Daniel assisted Coach Jaden outside. And Coach Jaden was telling me every day that, he, that Daniel was excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Daniel. She was in school, but she is here with us Monday. And Bethany helped me put everything together at home. Everything. We were working weekends. We were working nights. She was stapling, gluing, cutting. All kind of stuff was going on. And I would ask her, you have to your Bible school lead? <laughs> so thank you, all of you. I appreciate you, and we love you. All right, so I'm going to let the, do any of you guys want to say anything? Okay. So make sure up Elder James. Elder James, y'all know Elder James. Like, so. <laughs> Let's say I had a uh, wonderful opportunity um, to be the VBS uh, to work here with the children. And again, I just want to uh, publicly just uh, thank Daniel for all of his hard work. Yeah, <laughs> all of his hard work, um, everything. Uh, when I asked him to do something, he did it. I just want to say thank you, uh, Daniel, uh, for helping me out. Uh, this. We're going to work together next, next year, right? <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. OK, our theme, um, as Sister Jane said, this year was teach us to pray. And Monday, we said, what is prayer? No, what is prayer? And then who do we pray to? All right. And why do we pray? That's right. So we can have a relationship with God. Very good. And when do we pray? Anytime, anywhere. And then our last one was, how do we pray? And we pray with our whole body, our mind, heart, and soul, our posture, our position, and our presence. There must be a reverent posture. There must be a clean hands. And Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity to share how to pray with you. Um, just want to say I had the privilege of uh, working with the very energetic uh, four to six year olds. We had fun. We, we had a lot of fun. Um, but I do want to say um, Genesis did help me. Today. She started uh, working also with the four to six year olds. I want to make that public. Um, so thank you, Genesis, for, for, for helping me out, especially when that number got up. Genesis came on in. So she came in when I, when I needed her to. So thank you, Genesis. Want to make sure that um, she got that uh, recognition. They had wore him out. <laughs> Thank you, Genesis. They were in arts and crafts, though. All right. All right. 
So again, my name is Miss Terry. I just want to say, I want to thank the parents, first of all, for entrusting us of all, for entrusting us with your little ones. They were absolutely, truly a blessing to us, us with your little ones. They were absolutely, truly a blessing to us. And I'm just happy, like you guys, I, was, I grew up in Atlanta and they had a seven day Adventist. It was the Berean church down the street from me. And my friends and I would look for things to do during the summer. And vacation Bible school was one of them. So as I look back at you guys, you know, I think about where I was and how that carried me until I was a young old lady. I'm going to say I'm a young old lady. So I just want to say keep doing what And maybe one day you'll have the blessing that I had being able to give back and participate as an instructor. So I'm just thankful for each and every one of you little guys. And I just want to ask you guys one question. One day we talked about, during the day, we talked about self-esteem. What is self-esteem? Can somebody tell me? feeling good about yourself and it's how you think about yourself right and so miss terry said that my favorite thing about god is that he's a what kind of god he's a forgiving god right so when we make a mistake what do we hit the reset button and how do we hit that reset button by praying because we can't change the mistakes we can learn from them right take out of our vocabulary ugly right because god created us all so if we say that we're ugly or something's ugly, what are we telling God? That he made a mistake. Does God make mistakes? No. no. All right. So I want to say, Miss Terry, love you guys. And remember to pray. And I'll see you guys. I'm not going to say next year. I want to see you back on some Sabbaths, right? On some Saturdays. Right? Right. Right. All right. All right, and I do want to give out uh, uh, one more rewards, and we're going to get ready to do the prayer. For each grade, we had a student who was just outstanding, just, just overall, just a good person. We had a couple of them, but at the end of the day, we had to make some decisions. And so for the four- to six-year-old class, that little student was Abigail Peters. Abigail For the seven to nine, it happened to be Caleb Peters. Caleb, 10 to 12, I had two, I just, I couldn't make my, I couldn't, I couldn't make a decision um, because it's hard to find a, a respectful 10 to 12 year old, I know, because I was one and I raised three. So, um, Layla Johnson and Olivia Nurse, thank you for being examples this week. Thank you for being the best you that you could be. We saw you, we see you, we appreciate you, and great job, moms. Great job. All right, friends, let's sing our prayer song. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Do y'all need the paper? Y'all yeah. don't need that paper. No. Do y'all need the paper or not? Yeah. All right, come on, Haley. See, I had to call on Haley again. And Abigail and Treasure, that's for you, I think. And Gage, I keep calling, Gage. Me and Gage had a good time last week, if y'all can't tell. Treasure, give that to Treasure. Give that down to Treasure. Brantley, and I'm going to give one to little brother, and I'm going to send one to Gage, okay? <laughs> While we get ready for our song. Now, grown people, if y'all want to help them out, y'all know they might need a little help. This is our closing. I want to tell mommy something funny. So during one of the classes, we were, I passed around a mirror, and I asked the children, tell me something about yourself that you like. So it was Gage's turn. This is, this is Gage. Gage, raise your hand. Raise your hand, Gage. That's not Gage. Oh, he's not here. Okay. Brantley, I'm sorry. You. Okay. Oh, they're twins. Oh, no, no. Okay. So Brantley. Okay, so Brantley, I said, tell me something that you like about yourself. He said, I like my mouth, because I like to run it. <laughs> it well, well, if they're twins, I don't know which one it was. It was, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, it was him. With the, with the yellow shoes, yep, it was, yep. He said, I like my mouth, because I like to run it. I thought that was so cute. Choir, choir, we're in the choir. Remember what we do in the choir, shh. Let's see. And thank you, um, 
Mr. Lewis for this last minute. Mr. Lewis for this last minute. Oh, shh.